guy to pitch anything to anybody. Um, he's going to make the decision on you know, himself, and I'm going to be happy for whatever decision he makes. Of course, I want him as my teammate, but he's going to make a decision that's the best for him and his family, and I'm going to support him. I'm going to be happy for him. At the end of the day, he helped me get what I wanted to get. <laughs> <laughs> How should we remember this team? Champions. Well, we'll see. I think that Toronto will be remembered based on what they do next season. If they're able to win back-to-back, then that will validate this championship. If they lose next season, then they're going to be viewed as a team that took advantage of a weakened upper crust of the NBA. That's how they're going to be perceived. If they're not able to win back-to-back or two and three seasons, they're going to be viewed as a team that was only able to beat Golden State because all their stars went down. That's just the fact of the matter. Some championships are viewed as being of a higher caliber than others. Champions, that, that's who they are. Thank you very much to Kyle and Kawhi for sitting down with me at such a key moment in their lives. Right, but Rachel Nichols, which players in the NBA don't sit down with you? It's very obvious that you're, you're a key figure in the NBA media or in the NBA landscape for whatever purpose or whatever reason. You play a certain key role where the players are either told or they're compelled to believe that they have to sit down with you and nobody else. So you definitely are the plug. I'm not sure if you have connections through Adam Silver, through David Stern, through certain NBA owners or executives at ESPN. But there's no doubt that all of the prominent players are compelled to sit down with you and divulge their information for whatever reason. You're watching them, the joy. You know that joy. You won the title in 2008. Absolutely. You guys were a different kind of team, though. You did acquire pieces through trade, obviously, getting Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett to come when they came. But you also built a team, right? And then you guys were together and stayed together and went back to the finals in 2010. Right. This Raptors team was basically largely assembled this year. Absolutely. And they may disperse again. Do you think this is a new precedent in some way for the NBA? Well, you know. Well, the NBA economic framework or financial paradigm is always going to stipulate how long a certain team lasts on top or what the components of their roster are going to be because as more players are offered more money it's going to inspire them to leave I always say this had the Chicago Bulls been in existence when I say the Chicago Bulls I'm talking about the 1990 Chicago Bulls had they been in existence today there's no way that they could have won six championships because Scottie Pippen would have left The media would have been so much in his ear saying, Scotty, you're underpaid. Scotty, you can't win without Jordan. All these different things. He would have left. There's no doubt in my mind. Because if there was anywhere near the the mobility back in the 90s that you have today, Scotty would have left. He wanted to leave repeatedly. There were numerous moments over the course of, of that dynasty that he wanted to leave. And one of the main things that compelled him to stay on the Bulls in the mid-90s, of course, number one being his contract, but number two, when Jordan retired, that gave him the opportunity to find out what it's like to actually lead a team on his own. After he got exasperated with that, Jordan came back, and he was better being the quote-unquote sidekick to Michael, but even in the 1997-98 season, he wanted out. So, I mean, these contractual paradigms, the, the monetary systems that exist in the NBA are always going to determine how long you're able to remain on top. I mean, hats off to to the front office of the Raptors. I mean, you know, for for him to go all in uh, the way the way that they did um, with the firing of Dwayne Casey and hiring Nick Nurse as a first year coach. I mean, it speaks volumes, and I'm just happy. I'm happy for those guys. I mean, those guys are humble, great guys that work hard every day, and it paid off. You know, uh, at the end of the day, if uh-huh. I was to leave today, mm-hmm. it paid off. Um, he delivered a championship. I think nobody would be mad at him. Nobody would be mad at the uh, front office of the Raptors. And it paid off. Uh, the ultimate goal is to get a championship. You always want to go down as having a ring for us to, you know, obviously it's Kawhi's second ring, but he delivered a championship to a franchise that had never won a title. It's a real- Kendrick Perkins looked like he has a costume beard. Like, what's... What's really going on here? Did this brother just rob a bank and now he's trying to get out of the city in, in disguise? <laughs> what the hell is going on? Relevant question right now, Rachel, because Anthony Davis is in this potential mm. Absolutely. 
and the Warriors are probably going to be sort of in a pause year next year. I don't know else how to say it. What? There's a window, especially if Kawhi leaves the Raptors, where somebody could come in and do what the Raptors just did, which was go full Raptor. Do you go full <laughs> Raptor? Do you go for Danny Green in a walk here? Do you go? That's why I say that how the Toronto Raptors are going to be perceived down the line or, or retrospectively is going to be directly correlated with whether or not they're able to win back-to-back -back championships. Because the Houston Rockets, the Clutch City Rockets, they would have just been viewed as a blip on the radar if they had not been able to repeat in the 1995 season. That's what makes them memorable. Because watching them play against the Knicks in 1994, I mean, I remember being a viewer saying, this is not on the caliber of the Chicago Bulls, neither team. It was very obvious that neither team was on the caliber or of the caliber of the Chicago Bulls. So that's why it's important for those type of teams to win back to back. It was very important for the bad boy Pistons to win back to back, even though they were a better team than the Clutch City Rockets. It was important for them. Same with the Miami Heat in 2012 and 2013, because it cements you as a team that was not a blip. Like no one is really going to remember the 2011 Dallas Mavericks. That series will more be remembered for LeBron James disappearing. It's the same thing with the Toronto Raptors. They need to win back to back or at least two and three seasons. And I think that they're, they're better than the Dallas Mavericks were in, two, in 2011. They have a better roster. They have a better main player, even though Nowitzki and Kawhi are close. Kawhi can do things on both ends of the floor. Dirk may be a smidgen, a smidgen better offensively than Kawhi is. Marcus Saul, he can opt out. He may not, but he can opt out. Do you go for Kawhi? Marcus Saul's already on record as stating that what he does is going to be directly associated with, with what Kawhi does. So once again, that speaks volumes to Kawhi Leonard's leadership. Um, right now, the Raptors have no regrets. And when you win the championship, it means not having any regrets. And so right. I do think that there is you know, a team could probably convince itself to do it. I don't see what team it is right now because I, you know, I, I think Boston, if they go for Anthony Davis, I don't necessarily think they're a championship team. If they make some other moves, if Kyrie stays, maybe. Right. L.A. is so interesting because, you know, with the Warriors coming down a little bit, if they could pair Anthony Davis with, with, with LeBron. But then again, Anthony Davis says he wants to stay there, so it wouldn't be as big of a risk for them. So right. I'll be interested to see if there's any surprise bidders that come through, especially after seeing how this plays. I out. mean, speaking of regrets, you have to look at it. So the Raptors took a gamble, but DeMarcus Cousins also took a gamble. Absolutely. Um, he passed up a nice, a nice deal. DeMarcus Cousins did not take any gamble. <laughs> what he took was, a, was what they call a calculated assumption you know, you can call it a calculated risk, but it really was a calculated assumption. That being that the Golden State Warriors would win a championship with him on the roster. It didn't happen. At the very least, he and his team had to hope that he would be showcased enough to not only show his worth to the Warriors, but also to other teams. So it's going to be interesting to see what, you know, what the value of DeMarcus is on the market. Well, he could have stayed with the Pelicans and decided to come on a one-year deal to try to just get him a ring. So that was a gamble on his part, but it's... The Pelicans did not want him back, bro. Not better for the Raptors, and I mean, you just got to give them praise. I mean, the journey that they had, I told this, they had the toughest journey to win the championship in the last 10 years, in my opinion. It was up there. They, they faced some pretty good teams. They, that Philadelphia 76er team, that was a championship quality team. And I'm sure that when they look back, they'll say that that was their toughest series. That Philadelphia series was rough and it was tough, man. Milwaukee was a great team. And of course, the Golden State Warriors, even though they were hampered, they were still a great team. I think so, because they, they had to go through. They was down 1-0 to a young, feisty Orlando team mm -hmm. that wasn't bad at all. They had to go through Philly, who was projected by a lot of people to come out of the East. And then they beat Milwaukee Bucks and the, probably the MVP, mm -hmm. okay, they beat them, and then you come in, whether the champs was hurt or not, you defeated them. And I think it was great for basketball because it's now we're to the point where it's no more uh, the West is better than the East. So I'm happy that... Well, I've been saying for the entire season that I thought that the best teams in the NBA, aside from the Golden State Warriors, were all in the East. I thought that the Toronto Raptors, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Philadelphia 76ers, and even the Boston Celtics, just from a roster perspective, and if they played their best basketball, that all four of those teams were better 
than the teams in the West, aside from the Warriors, and maybe the Rockets, if the Rockets play their best basketball. Maybe. You could throw the Rockets in, in the mix of those four teams in the East. A team out of the East won. And you can see it now that basketball is about to start getting back. The NBA is about to start getting back to where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And not top-heavy teams. It's about to be real competitive. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Now, Boogie Cousins would say to you, he didn't have an offer from the Pelicans he liked. But I would also agree with you that he thinks the risk he took was worth it. Even Of course. How could it not be worth it? He assumed that they were going to win a championship. Out winning a ring. I think he really was happy with the way the support he got from the Warriors for all this worked out. You mentioned also the idea that they're not top heavy, not all the everything's concentrated on one, one team. We've got the odds already for the 2020 uh -oh. title. I'm shaky. They're shaky wow. in my mind. <laughs> well, one thing I will always remind you is these are betting odds. This is not. Now, keep in mind, this is before the LA Lakers made the trade for Anthony Davis. So it was obvious that Vegas already knew what was going to go down predicting what will happen they are predicting where people will want to put their money so there are a lot of people in los angeles who really want to bet on the lakers winning a title and as you can see caesar sportsbook is happy to take their money <laughs> um, but when you look at that is there a destination brian that you see for ad there so the two teams and they have it at the top if the lakers can get anthony davis they become instantaneously relevant and if the Clippers take Kawhi Leonard from the Raptors, mm. they become a very compelling team. Again, in conjunction with the fact that the Warriors are probably not going to be a championship team next season. Um, I well, we'll see. If the Warriors are able to re-sign KD as well as Klay Thompson and have them both back by March, which I think that they would, assuming that everything goes right with their rehab, I think that they could make a run, assuming that they're still in playoff contention. That's really going to be the crux of the matter. Can Steph Curry, Andre Iguodala, Draymond Green, I'm not sure if Sean Livingston is going to come back, but can those players, can they keep the team afloat in the Western Conference, a Western Conference that's going to be chomping at the bit to take a bite out of the Warriors' asses for what they've been doing to the league for the last five years? That's going to be the real, the real issue. Can they stay above water? But anyway, peace.